Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I'm delighted to have you with me today as I compare Apple's 14 inch MacBook Pro against the MSI GP66 Leopard. And before we get into the compare and the benchmarks, I want to answer a question, which is why this machine? Why specifically this Windows machine? But there's a very good reason. See, when Apple announced its latest MacBook Pros, it also revealed what were the PC counterparts that it tested against. So this is a brand new machine. They're still kind of hard to get. And we managed to get our hands on one and we're going to be comparing it, just like Apple did, against the new 14 inch MacBook Pro. So let's go ahead and just dive into this thing. The MSI has slightly larger than the 15 inch display, which we're comparing to Apple's, of course, 14.2 inch display of its 14 inch MacBook Pro. MSI is using an LED backlit display, while Apple has turned to mini LED this time around. Breaking down the ports, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is equipped with an SDXC card reader, an HDMI 2.0 port, three USB 4 slash Thunderbolt 4 ports, a high impedance headphone jack, as well as a MagSafe 3 port for power. Whereas the MSI GP66 Leopard has an HDMI port, a mini DisplayPort 1.4, three USB 3.2 port Gen 1s, a headphone jack, as well as a two and a half gigabit ethernet port. For storage, our 14 inch MacBook Pro starts off at 512 gigabytes, but you can get a one, two, four, or eight terabyte installed when you configure it to order. But on the MSI side, it comes with a one terabyte SSD installed. However, it is just a standard M.2, so you can take out that SSD and put your other one in. And there are actually two M.2 slots in there, so you can put two SSDs in there. And by the way, the MSI also has swappable soda memory, so you can swap out the memory and upgrade that later as well after you purchase the machine. Apple has a new 1080p FaceTime camera here, and it also benefits from Apple's own work on the silicon on the inside for the image signal processor. And on the MSI GP66, we have a 720p camera, but it'll also work with Windows Hello for facial recognition authentication, though it isn't quite as secure as the Touch ID found on the MacBook Pro. Speaking of Touch ID, it used to reside in the Touch Bar, which has been banished on the new MacBook Pros. So there's just a pretty standard keyboard here, as well as a row of function keys. It is a backlit keyboard with an ambient light sensor to automatically adjust the brightness based on the room. On the Windows side, the MSI GP66 Leopard has a SteelSeries RGB backlit keyboard with anti-ghosting. And it's a very cool. The colors here are pretty awesome. This is pretty typical we see with a lot of gaming PCs, and it just gives off a really neat effect. Apple has an all new audio system. In total, there are six speakers in this audio system. It can give you 3D sound, including Dolby Atmos. On the Windows side, there is a set of stereo speakers with a two watt output. Apple also puts in three beam forming microphones compared to just a single microphone on the MSI GP66 Leopard. Some of the other wireless connectivity options, Apple supports Wi-Fi 6 as well as Bluetooth 5. And on the Windows side, we have Wi-Fi 6E, which is a little bit better there, and Bluetooth 5.2. For video output, the MSI GP66 Leopard can handle two 4K external displays, while the Mac can do three 6K displays and another 4K display if you're on the M1 Max processor. And if you're on the M1 Pro, you can do two 6K displays. Apple includes either a 67 watt or 96 watt power adapter in the box. It's just a USB-C power adapter with a USB-C to MagSafe cable, but you can also charge via the Thunderbolt cables on the MacBook Pro. On the PC side, this MSI GP66 includes a 280 watt power adapter. And just look at the massive difference between these two in size. It is huge. It still takes a roughly a few hours to charge your machine all the way though. One thing I did notice was a little funky was just leaving it there for a few days, both the MacBook Pro and the GP66, full charge on both of them. After five days away, I came back, the Mac still had almost its entire battery, about 60% battery left, while the Windows machine was completely dead and I had to charge it before turning it on again. So the Leopard used in Apple's comparison is an 11th generation Core i7 processor, a Tiger Lake mobile chip that launched in Q3 of 2021 and is equipped with eight cores and 16 total threads. 
Its maximum clock speed in turbo boost is 4.6 GHz, but a base clock speed of 2.3 GHz. On the 14-inch MacBook Pro, the base model comes with an 8-core M1 Pro processor, but then it can go up to a 10-core M1 Pro processor and the 10-core M1 Max. In our case, we're using the 10-core M1 Pro processor, so even these scores here, it could go even better if we're looking at that M1 Max processor. For benchmarks, I turned to the cross-platform Geekbench 5. I ran both the CPU test as well as the compute GPU benchmarks on both of these two machines. A quick couple notes on the GPU test. I ran on the dedicated graphics card of the MSI because Apple doesn't have one, but I wanted the best possible performance to compare. So on the Mac, we're just running on Apple Silicon, while here we're using that GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU. Additionally, I wanted to use OpenCL on both these machines. There are other graphics frameworks that are supported on both the PC as well as like Metal on the Mac, but those would not be comparable. So these are both running for OpenCL. I also wanted to test these, how there's a difference in performance when it comes to running on battery versus connected to power. So I did both. I ran all these benchmarks connected to power, and then I ran them again connected just via the internal batteries to see how much of a performance dip there would be when you're not connected to a power source. So let's go ahead and see how all of those numbers stack up. Not to muddy the waters even more, but this Leopard computer has multiple performance modes that I can choose between. So I ran all these benchmarks with just the recommended, which splits performance and power, and then I ran them again at the highest level of performance. So we have a lot of numbers to compare on this GP66 Leopard. Starting with the CPU test, in Geekbench 5, the MSI GP66 Leopard scored a 1454 and a 7101 when recommended connected to power. If we put it into best performance, we got up to a 1547 and a 93.28 on that single multi-core test. Our MacBook Pro, on the other hand, scored an impressive 1765 on the single core and a 12566 on that multi-core. When we look at the battery test, however, it gets even crazier. That MSI GP66 Leopard scored only a 1416 on the single core and a 4480 on the multi-core when using the recommended power mode. But when we put it up to our best performance, we only got a 1506 and a 6046 on that single and multi-core test. Our Mac, however, didn't see any dip really at all in performance. We still got a 1773 on the single core and a 12522 on that multi-core. It is pretty darn impressive. Moving to the GPU test, I actually ran into a little bit of a peculiarity. Despite choosing the GeForce Discrete GPU, I was still getting these really, really low GPU benchmark scores. And it seems, whether because of a Windows bug or by design to save battery life, when in this balanced performance mode, the machine was always using that Intel integrated GPU instead. So I was not able to test the discrete GPU on this balanced performance mode. So it just seemed a little bit odd. If you're using balanced performance mode, the Windows machine seemingly just kept using the integrated graphics and graphics suffered by quite a bit. Only once I moved it to the better performance mode did that discrete GPU kick in. Let's go ahead and just look at the scores. Looking at the graphics test running OpenCL, we got an 8,031 when running in that best recommended mode. If we move that Leopard up to performance mode, we got a much better 86,835, and our Mac got a 36,298. If we connect it to power and run in our recommended power settings, we get a 125,659 on the PC, and if we move it up to performance mode, highest performance, we get a 127 for 30. Our Mac at its highest score got a 37,530. Not nearly as good, but we should get even better performance on the M1 Max processor, which has a higher core GPU. Just for fun, let's include the scores for the integrated Intel UHD graphics. The integrated graphics are much more comparable with a 8151 on the best performance mode when running on battery and an 8304 in that high performance mode when connected to power. To test the disk speed, I ran Blackmagic Disk Speed Test on both these guys, and these results were mind-blowing. 
the MSI scored a 2485 Mbps for the write speed and a 2616 on the read speed on its M.2 SSDs, while our Mac with that integrated SSD got a 5295 megabytes per second and a 5293 megabytes per second on the read, a significantly higher score for that Mac SSD. So there you have it. These are two pretty different machines. I don't think there's a lot of people that are deciding between the MSI GP66 Leopard versus the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is definitely more of a gaming machine. I mean, if you couldn't tell by the RGB keyboard uh, or this well ventilated design, this is a gaming rig and this isn't necessarily. There are more and more games appearing on the Mac, but it's still not nearly as gaming oriented as the PCs are. But if we're just looking at raw performance, there's such a huge difference here, especially when it comes to running on battery life. Apple had almost no degradation to performance while running on battery compared to the MSI 66 Leopard, GP66 Leopard. This thing took a huge hit when running on battery life. Just even if you optimize performance, it still wasn't nearly as good. And looking at the top numbers for Intel CPU, as well as the Mac one, it's still not even close. Apple outpaced it by quite a bit as we saw in those multi-core scores. It's just not even close. The biggest time that we saw the actual GP66 winning out was of course in graphics, because we're comparing a dedicated discrete GPU against Apple's integrated graphics. Apple's integrated graphics blew away the integrated graphics on the GP66, and it did really well compared to the discrete GPU, especially in power. This thing doesn't even have any USB-C ports, which drives me up a wall. Why is there a new PC without USB-C? I can understand not having Thunderbolt, but USB-C people, come on. Either way, this is just a really interesting look at a PC versus a Mac and seeing how they both compare. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and let me know what other comparisons you'd like to see over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you want to grab the MSI GP66 Leopard or Apple's 14-inch MacBook Pro, go ahead and check the links down below in the description.